Hey everyone, Dan here. If you own an inkjet printer or you send your photos to the lab, you've probably had times where you've gotten prints that don't match your monitor. Now, as part of a properly color managed workflow, there's a couple things you have to do. You obviously need to calibrate or characterize your monitor using a monitor calibration tool, and then you need to use profiles when you print and properly set up your printer for doing that. Now that said, even though you may have your monitor profiled and your printer properly calibrated and profiled as well, there's certain times there's colors that you cannot print on your printer that you can display on your monitor. And you want to be able to know what those are so you can compensate and make adjustments for that. So that's why we have a feature called soft proofing. Soft proofing lets you simulate what your photo is going to look like when it's printed. To control your soft proofing, you're going to go up to the view menu and there's an option called enable soft proofing right here. When you turn that on, the background is going to turn to white. It's actually going to be the color of the white paper that you're printing on. And it's also going to simulate what the colors look like that, that printer paper combination can reproduce. You can easily turn that off down here in the bottom. There's a little soft proof button which toggles that on and off. But let's talk about some of the options to help you really take advantage of this. In that view menu, underneath soft proofing, you need to pick the profile for the paper that you're going to print to. So in that profile flyout, any profiles that are installed automatically with your printer will appear in this list. Plus, you can use the import option to import any custom profiles that you may have downloaded from third-party websites or that you've developed with your own spectra photometer. So let's say I want to see what this looks like on my Canon Pro 100 using the Pro Luster paper. There we go. So that will now simulate it. And if I toggle that on and off, you can see the difference. You can also highlight the difference so it's a little easier to see by turning on the gamut warning. This will actually show you the colors that won't fit, the colors that don't translate. They'll appear in red. So all these deep dark shadows, those are darker blacks than what that printer ink and paper combination can produce. So it kind of gives me a bit of a warning of where things are going to look substantially different from each other. Another option in here is to simulate the paper in ink. Now that's going to be on by default, but you can turn that off as well. So you're really focusing on just the color differences in the proofing versus the changes you're going to get based on the white point, the color of the paper, and the black density of the ink as well. So for the most accurate representation, you'll want to turn that simulate paper in ink option on. Now keep in mind, that's kind of the worst case of what it's going to look like when it actually prints, because this is under ideal viewing. Uh, circumstances, which most of us don't look at our prints under. Now to really take advantage of that soft proofing, the next thing you could do would be to create a version of your current photo and make adjustments inside of develop or effects to compensate for those changes, the limitations of the printer profile combination. So here's what I would do. I would just turn on my film strip view. There's that photo that I'm working on. I could just create a new version of it. You notice the soft proof stays enabled and now I can make adjustments for it. So I happen to know this printer has a hard time printing that deep dark black that I want. So I could actually overdrive those blacks a little bit more to try to get a little deeper, darker black out of it. Or if it happens to lose a little bit in color, I could increase the saturation a little bit to get a brighter print out of it. Or maybe there's a little bit of dot gain and the whole photo darkens up a little bit. I could use the midtones or shadows to help compensate for that. Now those adjustments I wouldn't want on my master copy. I really just want it on my version for print. So by creating that version, adjusting its non-destructive settings for that printer ink paper combination is a great way to work. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching.